cut to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide Buddy, he's your Peptide Buddy. Hey everybody, so one of our valued Patreon members suggested we talk about BAM15, which understandably not many people know a lot about. So let's try to change that. BAM-15 is a newer compound that's not a peptide, but whose characteristics fall in line with what we typically discuss. It's known as a mitochondrial uncoupler. Let's start off by getting into what this means. It's important to preface our discussion by the growing body of research supporting the importance of cellular organelle health in the context of chronic disease, in that cellular aging and the functions of the little organelles that sit within each cell modulate different disease states. In particular, mitochondrial health is known to be implicated in development and severity of diseases of aging. It's why compounds like MOTC and even methylene blue, as we just discussed, are thought to interplay within the tiny, intricate balance of mitochondrial health. Of course, some compounds support this idea more than others. For instance, as we talked about, methylene blue definitely influences mitochondrial function, but this implication to different disease states is debated, as is understanding its complex pharmacokinetic profile, so that crafting an optimized dose regimen for different conditions is quite difficult. Now, there's a crucial process within the human body that the mitochondria facilitate, and it's called oxidative phosphorylation that is propelled through the electron transport chain. I'm not going to describe every step of the process because it takes a week or two in college-level biochemistry courses to do so, but in essence, it's a process by which these proton complexes within the inner mitochondrial membrane form an electrochemical gradient that drives the creation of ATP, which is the body's source of energy. Now, a mitochondrial uncoupler like BAM15 is thought to disrupt this in a way, where electron transport is made to be independent of ATP synthesis. This would make it tougher to produce ATP, and so the mitochondria have to increase processes like respiration and energy expenditure to compensate for the lack of ATP output. Therefore, there's proposed utility in management of obesity, for instance. BAM15 in particular is thought to be strongly selective, and it's known as a protonophore, and it targets mitochondrial uncoupling by mimicking a UPC, an uncoupling protein, and it was initially synthetically created a little over a decade ago. And initial research in rodent muscle cells showed it to be specific for the mitochondrial membrane, with less activity towards the plasma membrane, which, if it had, would indicate higher risk for damaging and cytotoxic effects. Do you recall that old compound called DNP, 2,4-dinentrophenol? During the 1930s, I believe, women who worked in industrial settings dealing with the compound began fatally overheating, becoming hyperthermic, losing weight, becoming dehydrated, ultimately multiple of them dying. And since it's been used as a black market weight loss compound in some settings because of these effects that ultimately increase energy expenditure with a highly concerning and toxic side effect profile. BAM15 is not too dissimilar from DNP, however it's thought to be safer because it's more specific for the mitochondrial membrane and in these preclinical models showed a more favorable therapeutic index. And as such, in mice, in two trials, it appeared preventative against diet-induced obesity and features of insulin resistance without significantly reducing lean body mass in these rodents that essentially demonstrated similar food intake to their counterparts that didn't receive the compound. But they lost more weight than the calorie-restricted group, which is definitely interesting. While, at the same time, BAM15 appeared to improve hepatic lipid accumulation, hinting at broader possible context of use. And it seems to do so additionally via interaction with signaling pathways that ultimately would increase glucose uptake and utilization via an intricate, complex process which in the context of BAM15 has not been yet explicitly elucidated. But interestingly, it is an orally bioavailable compound. So another study in mice showed BAM15 to suppress progression of a form of cancer called acute myeloid leukemia, or AML and prolong the survival of eight of these rodent subjects. This finding has propelled the idea that BAM15 may serve as a potential chemotherapeutic agent, but the researchers rightfully state that the how behind its mechanism is something that needs to be further evaluated. That said, the compounds also thought to interplay with processes of inflammation and organic injury, as seen in some mice inoculated with a toxin after administration of BAM15. 
However, the extent to which and how hasn't yet been discovered. It's more of a proof of concept study, a pilot trial, to shed light on something that hopefully will be in the future investigated so that we best understand the implications and mechanism by which BAM-15 works. But optimistic implications for such include possible use in sepsis, as one article in the Journal of Clinical Investigation actually showed its candidacy for, as such in mice with a sequel ligation and puncture model of sepsis, where it seemed to improve a molecular pattern characteristic of sepsis-induced cellular injury, and additionally in this evaluation showed possible benefit in management of acute kidney injury modulated by neutrophil infiltration. I will also add that mitochondrial and coupling agents are thought to impair human sperm motility, which is of course something to consider. BAM-15 was shown in particular to affect sperm mitochondria, and thus at some point could possibly be considered and actually a contraceptive. Well, here's the fun part, the peptide buddy pause. In spite of the hype, our understanding on this compound and the translation of these few preclinical trials to humans cannot be understated. This is a compound that hasn't been dosed or trialed in humans in any way, shape, or form. Its pharmacokinetic profile has yet to be fully understood, and since it's a highly lipophilic compound with a very complex, not explained mechanism, Optimizing not only dose, but also effect and tolerability at this point in humans is far from understood. Just the likelihood of it alone affecting fertility is in a way a microcosm of the grand scheme of concerns that at this point are untouched. It's in its infancy. Trying to draw translation from studies in a couple dozen mice to humans whose fat content is different, whose tolerability is different, whose ability to tell you what they're experiencing is different, is not there at this point, especially when we consider that the act of mitochondrial uncoupling, although at the biochemical level, is not harmless. And history with DMP, which I acknowledge is different than this compound, has shown that. And I don't know if anyone at this point is doing so, but if there are people pushing BAM-15 as something to be taken by humans in 2025, it's, for lack of a better word, incredibly irresponsible. On top of that, nobody would tell you it to take anything if we don't know how it works, and that's where we stand currently. This will certainly be a frontier for further researchers to develop and investigate, but it's novel, which not only means it's promising, but it also means it's new and misunderstood, and that's the beauty of it. If we didn't have novelty, researchers wouldn't make progress, but with that comes patience and a need to better understand what we acknowledge we don't know. That said, I want to thank you to the Patreon subscriber who brought this compound to my attention. It's certainly something that, of course, I'll keep an eye on. If you do like this evidence-based educational layout, please give us a like and subscribe. It's the best way to support the channel. However, if you're looking for other ways to give us some support, you can join the Patreon where you can request videos, be part of this awesome community we've developed. And on top of that, I did recently release a 20-page guide on BPC-157 and the information that surrounds it so we could develop a stronger educational base and knowledge on these different peptides and compounds. I will make sure that all these relevant links and all the references I cited are in the description below. But all in all, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day. Take care. Cut to the chase, evidence-based Pull up a chair, let's get this straight Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy